welcome back episode five of my series and today i'm joined with a very special guest someone that i've been watching for quite some time almost since day one today i'm joined here with chris leach i'm very excited to sit down with him and just learn more about how he came up how he's making a name for himself in the field and just everything all about chris so hey chris welcome what's up what's up how you doing i'm glad to be here We've kind of known each other like since 2018, but we've never really sat down and talked. Yeah, it's been a, yeah, it, that was really a minute ago. Yeah, it was. Let us know, just a brief description, who you are, what you do. Chris, Cozy, you know, shout out Cozy, however, however you want to do it. Um, from Rock Hill, South Carolina, creative, photographer. Don't want to, don't want to say photographer because I'm definitely a creative, like I want to put my foot into a lot of things, so. Yeah, that's pretty much it. When I see someone or interview someone and there's not too much going on, like they're a little bit more private on social media, I like to ask them kind of who you were growing up as a kid, young adulthood. That way we can kind of know who you were before you got to this point. Do you mind telling me a little bit more, like growing up who you were? Yeah, growing up, cool kid, sports, was really into sports. I started out playing football, basketball, then, yeah, just had a cool group of friend group um you know a little different was trying to you know get into fashion music South Carolina got a lot of music around us so deep into music um like you said we all play sports so yeah just coming up yeah cool kid playing sports um capturing moments that's why I decided to get in photography you know I was always that one on the iPhone like oh yeah let's take these pictures let's do this let's do that so yeah the way that we met and i can't remember if we followed each other on instagram before or after this but i met you at the social status good times pop up but i remember like you asked to take pictures of me and my friends at the time you tagged me in them later and i was like oh cool you know i'm gonna follow him back whatever and it's been like really cool just to see how things have yeah. evolved since then it seemed like you were just bringing your camera anywhere and everywhere type yeah. of thing you were just asking people to take pictures of them like nobody knows really know who's who you are and stuff like that yeah like that's how I go back like to my friend group, like we from Rock Hill, South Carolina, like just coming to Charlotte was just cool, you know, mm -hmm. it was real cool to us, like we was always amazed by the city, so I think I was following you already, mm -hmm. so when I saw you in, I'm like, okay, like trying to network, meet people in Charlotte, you know, I wanted to meet more people in Charlotte, so I had a reason to come there, you know what I mean? It was a good event, and I feel like if you weren't there, you're square, like you just had to be there. It was yeah, that was like the start of like everything, yeah. People back then would take pictures and just post them all on Instagram in one night. Like it would be yeah. like 10 new posts and you would tag everyone. And it's kind of different now. Like you have to be more like business thinking. Yeah. But did you do things like that all the time back then? Like you would just be like, oh, this event's going on. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures yeah. of people and stuff. I got my camera when I was 17. My mom bought it for me for my birthday. So every like, cause before then I was just on the iPhone like with my friends. But once I got that camera, like we was, whatever came up, like yeah, we there shooting it. When you went to the Good Times pop up, were you in college yet, or you were about to graduate, or? Yeah, still in high school, about to graduate. Yeah. That event was in the fall winter, so I think it had taken a year for me to start seeing you do like things at Upstate, cause that's where you went to college at Upstate, right? Um, South Carolina State. Okay, but you would go to Upstate for events, yeah, something. Go. Yeah, cause their homecomings were kind of crazy. Yeah, any any school in South Carolina, yeah, I probably was at their homecoming <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I would see a shift with the pictures when you would start doing like their homecomings and events and things like that. For me, I remember the exact time I was like, Chris is going crazy is when you started shooting for Mirror. Yeah. Like, free, yeah, free Mirror. Yeah, by the free? way. Free. Free my boy. Yeah. But yeah, he home, oh, yeah, home no. soon. We're going to be back. Yeah, in motion. I don't, don't even worry about it. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Free Mirror. Yeah. Dang, <laughs> I didn't know that. So in college, you know, you're balancing out school and everything, but you're also making time to perfect your craft. What work did you put in or research did you have to put in to just get better behind the lens? Yeah, that's really that? crazy. Cause like I was doing what I was doing in high school, but college was like those years where I was like getting into it. Like, okay, yeah, I'm seeing pro progress. Like I'm actually getting somewhere with this. Really was just, just locked in. I, of course I was in school, but still just studying I bought my, end up buying my own camera while I was working over the summer before college. So I just started like really focusing on it really hard. I knew I wanted to do like lifestyle music scene. So I was just locked in on it. Like 
trying to meet this person, that person, just trying to get in, get in the door, really. So once that happened, like, I don't know, like once it started, it, like it just kept flowing. Like mm -hmm. things that just started coming to me, really. You know, you don't just buy a camera and your pics look amazing, right? Yeah. You need to do research about like the right lens, settings, what to do in the right lighting, if you're outside, what to do, et cetera, et cetera. Were you like a YouTube university type of dude or did you take any extracurricular classes or? I think it's the eye, really. Yeah. Some things, yeah, I'm like, let me just, play around this adjustments to it look like it look right to me like but of course YouTube got me right just focusing on the three things like ISO aperture what were you shooting with before compared to now you said you bought your own camera and your mom bought you a camera like what was the type of equipment what were some brands or things that you were using before compared to now uh Canon Canon guy I always been a Canon guy had like a T6 my mom bought me a T6 whatever lens came with it yeah kit lens that's what I was using yeah. so yeah shooting with that for a while then I moved up. I bought me a um, a 6D Mark II Canon, still Canon. So that was I still got that camera right now. But yeah, been shooting with that for a while. I did, I, you know, I'm mixing with Sony too, cause I work with a company who use straight Sony. Like I like Sony, but I might, you know, Canon. Just the colors is it's amazing. So you work at Social Status now. A lot of people don't know it's we we're actually the Whitaker Group. Mm -hmm. So that's like the parent company of social status. APB. APB, I'm on the air, um, I think another store called Prosper. But yeah, so I'm a creative um, photographer. Like I do a little e-com too. So that's what I do for the Whitaker Group. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all the brands that you see in social, we doing creative work for it. Like we're shooting it on model, you know, editorial, we do it all, yeah. Do you guys have full control? The shoots that I see on Instagram, it'll be like, it could be white backdrop, shipping yes. container, city skyline. Do you guys like choose or do they give you like, this is the vibe? It's like different vibes for each store, basically. So like social, yeah, you can get outside, have a little fun sometimes, but don't do it like a lot. Like stay in studio sometimes for certain brands. You know, certain brands may be a little upscale or, you know, high end. It's all, you know, based on the brand really. But uh, like, yeah, I'm on my ear. You familiar with I'm on my ear? Yeah, mm -hmm. like, probably studio, for sure. How does that feel? Social status is a place. You're in Rock Hill. You're like, oh, let's go to Charlotte. It's gonna be so fun. We gotta go to social status. And now you work for a group that oversees them. It must be like a really cool opportunity and feeling. You know, I was just going there. Like, I look at, you know, you, you on Snapchat. I'm on there, like, to look at memories and everything. You know, the memories pop up. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, older memories come on. I'm like, dang, I was in social status this day. Now I'm like, I'm sitting at work, like, shooting every brand that come through. Yeah, it's like a full circle moment. It's cool. It's pretty cool. You get to host gallery and things like that it must be really cool you know not just for you but your friends and family like they watched you like your mom bought your camera for you and like you take pictures of your friends um, how many galleries have you done or were involved in um I haven't been involved in a lot I think probably only one one or two I think it's two yeah I did the one with the company and then recently um, a guy named Mike Jones did a photo walk and we had a gallery shout out to be social too if y'all don't know about be social man Go on Instagram, type in Be Social, and they'll get you right. You can have free events in there, community-based events, but yeah. If I hadn't went to that event, I don't know if we would be sitting here. Yeah, we wouldn't be sitting here right now doing this interview. <laughs> I want to ask about your name, Cozy. Is this at all ASAP mob influence? Because I just remember back then, <laughs> you were rocking like Raph Simmons and Cozy Tapes was coming out, and everyone knows me. My license plate ASAP seat. I'm, I'm also at ASAP member but is it at all a step it's, it's definitely influenced like like i said coming from rock kids i can learn a lot of people wasn't hip mm -hmm. to like that whole era like coming up on cardi and just the whole mob like we yeah we we used to listen to that a lot we used to put people on at school yeah i think i used to come to high school just wearing like like you said clothes and people would just would call me cozy and then it just started sticking and, yeah from there so yeah definitely came from like high school Early on, that's where the nickname come from. Yeah. Before you were cozy, were you C smooth? <laughs> <laughs> How you know How that? Smooth were you? How you know that? <laughs> Wait, is that like my old like? Does my Instagram still pop up like that, or how do you how you figure that out? Who is C Smooth compared to who is who is that man compared to the man I'm looking at right now? C Smooth, a right uh, young young kid. Bad. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> not bad. 
I want to talk about fashion a little bit. When did you kind of start getting into the fashion world and have you always been interested in fashion? And kind of just take me through that journey. Yeah, I think so. Coming up, I always was um, very fascinated with fashion, interested in it. Like you said, music, coming up, seeing artists, rappers, I don't know, like old Cardi influenced a lot of people. I ain't gonna care. I, I, yeah, I, I miss the Ian Connor, all them back then. Like, yeah, I would say music influenced it a lot. And just wanting to look good, like going out, wanting to feel comfortable, like like just being cozy, like just wanting to be yourself. But yeah, I always wanted to look good. I definitely be trying to get into it a little bit. I want to do it, get into it more, show my face more on my page. Cause yeah, I feel like that's kind of important. I don't want to just like, Oh, it's straight photography, but like, oh, I can't even find like what he looked like. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't went on people's pages like that. And like, yeah. I don't know who they are. It can be a hard balance because if you put too much of yourself out there, yeah. it's like, am I booking with him because I like him or because I like his work? So it's like you kind of want to be a mixture. But I do want to like from here and there, maybe yeah. I don't know, once don't a month know. or. If it's just a story or, I don't know, go live, show more personality so you know who I am, just other than just me creating. I would love to pull up a photo that I would like to show you. Oh, you got a photo? <laughs> don't be nervous, why are you nervous? I just want to know, like, what was the shift from this to how you are now? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna pull that up on there? Yeah, I'm gonna pull it up. That's Maybe. crazy. Like this is what we was on. That's what we was on. Ain't gonna, that's that's Polo Thursday. Yeah, it was a thing. Like we were, you wore, we wore Polo on Thursday. What watch was this? I don't even know. Probably a, um. I don't this even Amazon. know. <laughs> <laughs> Them high school days back then. Polo yeah. Thursday. Polo Thursdays. Recently, I did see that you were in a video that was shot with Lou. They used the Ruby Vincent song, different things like that. I can't find the video anymore. I don't know if it was archived, but it was that video about the shoes. Oh, the Nike attacks. I think so. And you had a clip for like 10 I seconds. I had a clip, yeah. So maybe like five, three seconds. Hey, yo, my man Q. There's just so many different opportunities like that. Like you can be in the video, in the picture. You recently did a thing with APB. Like how is that to be in front of the camera nowadays for a huge organization and company. Yeah, it's really different. Um, basically, yeah, shout out to the job because like, we had these big productions, but we you need, you know, you need cast to do these productions. So sometimes it might not be someone there and boom, you get that little chance to be in the video, you know? Yeah, they had the Nike attacks. Um, they did it in Rock Hill. So I really was just going to um, just be, you know, be a part of the set, just um, see how it was going, you know, just soak up uh, any knowledge that from the people that were there, but they were like, "Hey, we need like we need like somebody to be in the video," and they were like, "We probably we probably just gonna use you." I'm like, "Where?" Like, but yeah, I had a little part. Yeah, APB. They have like APB style. I think that would be something mm. you would um, like, cause you you know, yeah, we gotta put you the goat with the fashion and everything. So appreciate it, but you have to wear brands that are in the store. Yeah. So no Sakai, no no name for me, but. I know with social media, not everybody posts where they work and things like that. Throughout me following you the past few years, I didn't see like you working and this and that. Like you were in school doing things, but is this like your first like job job? I guess in my career field, yeah. yeah. But I worked at Carowinds through college. I was going back um, working at Carowinds. I think I did that a little bit throughout college. And then I eventually just started working at my school, at my college. Yeah, Carowinds, I worked there. That's when I bought my first camera. How does it feel like this is your first job out of college and everything, and you're already blessed with all these opportunities? Like, like you can't even understand it. Sometimes. Yeah, it's really crazy. Like, I tell people that all the time. Like, I don't know. I'm just blessed though. Like, people really don't realize that. A lot of people hit me up and ask me like, "Hey, how you doing? Like, like how how did you get to this point? What are you doing? I don't know. Like, you just gotta love it. Like, you really gotta love what you do. Like, go out and shoot. Like, I even took a photography class in college. It was strictly film, but like we had to just go out and shoot. That sounds like a really good class because it can apply to digital too. Because you need to know how to work light. Film is all about lighting. All about lighting. We had to use like the cameras, like the light meters on the cameras didn't work. So we were like on the phone with it, metering like the yeah. camera. Then it was strictly black and white because we actually developed the film ourselves. Yeah, so just like, just loving it like loving anything and everything about like photography like i feel like that's like well what what got me 
to where I am today. I'm kind of circling back here a little bit. We mentioned Mirror earlier, which free Mirror, I have been made aware he's coming home soon. Real soon. So early on back then, you know, all that I saw at the time was, you know, you're at homecoming, you're behind the scenes at a concert, this time the third. How did those opportunities come about where someone wants you to take their pictures at their music video shoot and things like that? Was it word of mouth or did you ask them like, hey, can I take pictures? Really be word of mouth networking. Like I met him through a videographer already that I was cool with. He like, yeah, I'm shooting this video. Like he, they already know, like, of course I, I like, I want to shoot music, want to shoot artists. So they bring me on, yeah, like do BTS and boom, like I built a connection there through him, um, guy named Reef. And just from there, yeah, like you meet the artists, you post the pictures, like other people are going to see that other artists is going, you know, it's going to track them. So. And I'm like, oh yeah, push up to my video. I got this video coming up. And I always tell people like, whatever you want to shoot, like establish that, like manifest it. Like don't think you got to just shoot like all kind of stuff. Like if you have a favorite thing you like to shoot, like just go for it. And opportunities are coming your way. I know a lot of people do free work for so long and then the opportunities come in later. But like, do you remember like, what was the first time you got, someone wanted to commission you for something? Man, let me see. Um, I definitely probably was in high school early on. I think I reached out to just friends. I would be like, yeah, I just got a camera. Like, like let's do a shoot. Like, and I would post it like, okay, like this is good. Like, just gotta like attract somebody. And then at, like, after I doing it after a while, like each post, I would get DMs from people like off that one photo. And that's when I started like, I guess getting money. So maybe like senior year of high school, 20, 2018, all through college, yeah, I started, yeah, making money. I'm glad to hear that it was a little bit early on because some people will go to every show and this and that and it kind of takes a while, but I feel like that's the new era. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if it was on camera or not, but some people are just hesitant to pose because of algorithm yeah, things. Yeah, don't, yeah. It's not how it used to be, like people weren't posting dumps of 30 pictures they took outside of social status and tagging everybody, so it's different now, but. I used to post a lot back then, mm -hmm. but like I try to limit it now, I don't know, just to give people a break. I don't want to like flood them too much, but I think I still post a lot like, like recently, like like just last week, I think I posted like three things. It's kind of crazy to say that now, like, cause yeah. back then people were posting every day. Like, like every day, yeah. And we were liking it, it was great. I tell people, yeah, like go ahead and post that work. Like you got somebody you want to shoot, go do it with them, post it. Cause you never know. Like that's how you're going to get to where you need to be. You gotta post it, somebody gotta see it. A lot of companies now are asking for your Instagram handle. People don't realize that your Instagram, they need to see, can you write a good caption? Are you engaging with your audience? Are you a cool person to talk to? Can you establish connections? It, it does make a difference. People underestimate the power of social media. Five minutes later. Who are some photographers, not just photographers, but creatives that are really like people that you have your eye on at the moment? I wanna mention one of mine. And it's uh, Gunnar Stahl, like I love Gunnar him. Stahl, yeah. yeah. He's, he's crazy. Definitely one of the ones in the beginning um, who I watched and looked at. Um, another person is a female photographer, her name is Verissa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been watching Verissa for a minute. Like, I think she took off like around the time she shot the, like the first Dreamville. But yeah, her, I love her work. Um, she does a lot of lifestyle. I think she's like Tyga's personal photographer now. So like I've watched her like along the journey. Uh, another guy, um, dude is, I think his name is Matt Marzel. His name is like Mo Moti Mars on Instagram. He's Gucci man, personal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gucci got some crazy pictures. Yeah, so if you if you go to his page, like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those those three probably yeah, like some of my favorite photographers. Um, speaking of Dreamville. That's a great thing I want to talk about, is you did shoot the last Dreamville. Yeah. Uh, just take us through that whole thing, even when you just got the invitation. I just want to hear about that. Cause was that your first festival? Yeah, yeah, that was my first festival. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, which is crazy, but. And you got blessed, cause that was a great, the closing night was crazy. That was crazy. the first one. I mean, yeah, that was a, for the first one, yeah, Drake and everybody like there, like. Yeah, then he brought out everybody, mm -hmm. which is crazy. But that was a, it really was a tough weekend. Of course, I, I know someone, I used to shoot a lot of, um, I wouldn't call them festivals, like, but just arena shows that happened in Columbia. Mm -hmm. um, so Colonial I know, Life Arena? Yeah, Colonial mm -hmm. Life. So I know a guy through um, through the radio station in Columbia. So me and him, you know, we, we both went to South Carolina State. Not at the same time, he's a little older than me, but met him through, you know, just by going to the school. He actually um, 
hooked me up with uh, Dreamville uh, Pass. But like, that was a crazy weekend. I, I didn't even think I was going to actually like get to shoot J. Cole or Drake. Because that first day, got there pretty late. Um, and then when we got there, they were like tripping, like trying to say it was like too late to get the pass. But somehow, I got into Dreamville with no ticket, no media pass, right when Usher was performing. Mm -hmm. So I'm like in there with my camera. Yeah. I didn't have a ticket, nothing. Like I ain't have a wristband on, nothing. And I'm in Dreamville like shooting Usher. Were you shooting it from the crowd? Yeah, I was from the crowd. Like Those were some good the pictures. The little area that we was supposed to be in, like we still managed to get to that oh, area. Oh, okay. So you were still in the media section. Yeah, but I just didn't have my stuff. Like, wow, that's a blessing. So we kind of had to. Yeah, I snuck through some people, yeah. but the next day it was like, yeah, we got to get there early, make sure we can get this. Like, so I'm really going into the day like, dang, bro, like they turned us down last night. Like, am I even going to get my pass? Like, things ended up working good. Um, got the pass. Had to stay at that same stage that Drake and J. Cole performed at. Had to stay there all day. Like, so I was there for like eight hours. Oh my God. Did you leave like for food? I ain't leave for food. I didn't leave. I had a water bottle. Oh my God. I, I sipped my water lightly because I didn't want to drink too much. I'm like, dang, I got to pee. Why couldn't you leave? First off, like, they cut everybody off. Like, because they knew it was a big day. Like, it was like, so you can't be in the pit. Like, you got to just find an area like right behind it. It's like still considered like VIP. Yeah, they were like cutting people's passes. Like, yeah, you can't be in um, cutting pit a pit access access. But yeah, they started cutting everything, and so that spot that I was in, like, I had to stay there. I think Waka Flocka performed there at that stage first. Then it was supposed to be Glorilla, but she didn't come at that time. Then it was Summer Walker. Then it was um, J Cole and Drake. But yeah, it was there all day. I mean, the pictures were phenomenal, but I didn't know. That's some things like that's why I love to have these conversations is because people don't know what you had people to go through. People don't know. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Literally, they that's don't know. Crazy. That's why this this is my first interview actually. Like I never did an interview, but yeah, for any of y'all out there thinking like I shoot shows that's like that and they come easy, like they know they don't at all. Like every show that I've shot, I I, I went through something like bad one water bottle like <laughs> i just know it's hot it's, it's in april i think yeah it was hot it's like hot like and i know the flowers are blooming if you got allergies you i couldn't wait till that sun went down well i just know you were shocked like lil wayne's coming out and yeah uh, drake That's yeah like drake he was like yeah i brought the pack with me like y'all are y'all ready like he brought out who he brought out first i think he brought out glorilla Cause she didn't come at her set time, so he brought her out. Then he hit us with Uzi. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Then Wayne. Then um 21. That was that was a tough weekend, but it worked out. Yeah, shout out to. And shout first out to festival, God. and now that's a great to put on your portfolio for yeah. future festivals. Cause festivals, you hit so many artists in one day. Like, one day. You got content for the whole month. So that's what I'm trying to do now. I definitely want to get locked in with festivals. Mm -hmm. And try to because there's so many festivals like you don't even know about like yeah and on the east coast too yeah they just be happening like all year long so it's like yeah, there's agencies out there that i i've been looking looking at i definitely want to i want to just present my work try to get on one of those teams so i'm shooting festivals all year like i feel like that'd be great speaking of music festivals who are like some of your favorite artists uh drake of course my favorite j cole um they on my boy head right now, but Gunna. Oh, I listen. I love Gunna. I love Gunna, man. They, but they, 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 they trying to give him a hard time, but you know what I'm saying. You see what he just did, delivered. The pictures you took of Gunna at the film mark. <laughs> There's just one specific picture where this man got his shirt all the way up to him. <laughs> I'm like, why did he do him like that? Like, what? But that fit. I'm sorry, Gunna. That fit is so good. It fit crazy. I used to go to the film. I used to just buy a ticket, like get there early. Those days of the the film were back then was so different. I would say back then all the shows like because artists used to do that. They used to do small venues like low ticket um, prices. Like yeah, the prices were so yeah, different like, too. When I saw J Cole for the first time, ticket was like twenty dollars. Yeah, I saw him at uh, what is that place in Columbia? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think that's that's is a show. Is it a music farm? Yeah, music farm. That's a show that sold out like a minute. 
Yeah, I, I went to that concert. It was after For Your Eyes Only, I want to say. Yeah. But that concert was like 35 bucks. Cardi Neon Tour was like less than 50 bucks. That's what I'm saying. All those, yeah, I ain't, when I shot Cardi, what it was, Gunna, um, Rich the Kid, um, I shot Lil' Keed at the Fillmore. All those shows, I didn't have a media pass for none of those. Like, I just went there early. That's what people used to do. So I can do. be on the rail, yeah, a little camera. You bring one without a detachable lens? Yeah, a little pocket, you good. Like, and you put the flash Yeah, in. people don't know that too. Yeah, if you want to shoot shows, like, if you really interested in shooting shows, just buy a ticket and try to get up front and bring you a little camera in there. Like, I just did that with Don Tolliver. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah, you, you was there. I remember I would look down, I was like, is that Chris? And I was like, oh shit. And you, you were like, I got a camera on me. And then when I saw you post them later, I was like, you would think you had a media pass. I think I had didn't. a media pass. Like you wouldn't, you would never know. I think this is a good wrap up for me to ask you, what are some long-term personal goals within not just, you know, photography? Cause like you said earlier, you're not just a photographer. You're really like a creative overall. Cause you've been getting into the videos too. And I love it. But as a creative, like, what are some goals you want to set for yourself? Some dream opportunities that you, you know, not just pray for, but work for? I just want to stay consistent. Don't, don't get complacent. Um, never get to a point where I feel like, oh, I made it. And I, and I just want to feel like I never made it. And I just want to like keep working from there. Like trying to just do this, do that. And just do something like next level. Like you said, yeah, I want to consider myself a creative. I want to get more in the video photography, shoot, even like director, management, everything. Like, but I do, some of my goals, I do wanna be someone's personal. That's always been like one of my main goals, is I wanna be a, um, someone's personal photographer. I love just lifestyle. I've done it before, like just by being on tour before, just the lifestyle, the music, going around. Like I mentioned before, just festivals. I love love shooting festivals. Like one of the best things ever to me. I like the feeling of just doing it. So, like Hopefully I said, not that, with one water bottle. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If I if I feel like yeah, if I if I do it then, like it'll be the right way. Like I'll be on a team or agency. But yeah, I um yeah, I follow or I see some agencies out there that they actually do that. So yeah, I want to be able to be on a be on a team when just shoot festivals all year long, getting paid for it. Who did you go on tour with? You said you went on tour? Yeah, I went on tour in 2021. Like that was back in college. Like I said, it was really college was big, but um, South Carolina artist by the name of Black Zach. Mm -hmm. It was Moneybag Yo Tour though. And he brought the artist Black Zach on with him. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Black Zach brought me on to be his photographer. Those are always great opportunities. A lot of people that I know, they're like, this opener for this person, we went on three stops, and I feel like those are like life changing. Opportunities. Yeah, it was life changing. Like, you on the road, definitely you like a crazy. Every night. Yeah, it was a crazy experience. I feel like, yeah, tour, editing, all that, nothing now. Like, when I was on tour, I'm like, we was in Chicago one night, and the next day we in Milwaukee. Like, if I don't get that work from Chicago, and like, it's pretty much old. Cause you in a whole new city the next day. And they gotta post it in the and morning. And they gotta post like, it in the morning, you know what I'm saying, last yeah. night. But like, you don't get that to them, like, you're like, done, it's showtime now. Like, you might as well just forget Chicago. I mean, you could probably make something, but just, yeah, just learning to be consistent with editing and, yeah, like, tour, it was fun, but then again, like, it was tiring. Like, I'm, I'm up editing. Like, it was like, week, like, a couple weeks before the tour, I'm like, on YouTube, like, crazy, like, trying to get right in premiere. I'm glad that happened because made me into a whole better creative now. It humbles you, your work ethic changes. Yeah. It shows you also the demand. If you want to be someone's personal photographer, they're like, yeah. some people want to post twice in one day. They're like, all right, where's the photos from brunch? And you're like, huh? And it lets you know, like, yeah, like some people got it like that, like the baby or somebody, like they can have a photographer and they can have a video team. Some people just want artists, you know, you might have to do both. So. If you wanna, yeah, you wanna be someone's personal, I, I say you go ahead and learn, learn camera, you know, photo and video. You know, I pray for more blessings in the future, for sure. It's been a great thing to watch you just from social media. Yeah. Just to see your growth and different things like that. It's been very fun. I really root for people through social media. Like, I, I love to see people's journey and everything. So, I definitely wish you 
a great career ahead. Do you have any questions for me or anything you want to say to anyone? Just shout out to you. Um, podcast going crazy. It's time flies. Like it seemed like was Jordan the first one? Yeah, Jordan was guest number one. Yeah, that's he, crazy. We're on, this is episode five. So yeah, by the end of the year, this is gonna be crazy. Like, yeah. Oh, socials, different things like that. Social oh yeah, media. yeah. Shop by Cozy on Instagram. Um, yeah, just come watch the journey. Cause, yeah, I'm in this for a long, long time. Thank you guys for tuning in to episode five of my series. You can click here to watch my last interview with Roman Vincent, and you can click here to watch the interview before that with Miles Got Soul. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Threads. <laughs> threads, yeah, the new Threads. Threads. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.